Okay, we'd like to welcome you back to our current event and weekly Bible study for 8-31-08, August 31st, 08. And in this session, we're going to be talking about the subject of yoga and the particular subject of this being thrown around as Christian yoga, which, which is where we're going to find is actually rooted in Hindu occultism. This first little article I'm going to read from kind of sums things up, and I think it's a good initial introductory paragraph to this study. This guy's from the Spiritual Research Network, uh, Chris Lawson. He says, Dear Reader, the following articles have been written in order to convey information about the unbiblical practice of Christian yoga. Sadly, many professing Christians in the church are too undiscerning to know any better. Even Hindus recognize that Christian yoga is still Hindu. And we're going to talk about that later. <clears throat> These articles are also written with heartfelt grief and concern for those whom I have lovingly warned about the dangers of yoga, but who have rejected biblical counsel, pastoral exhor exhortation, and brotherly advice, and the testimonies of destroyed lives, written warnings from the yogis of the dangers involved with yoga, etc. The past year I have received several emails from people whose lives have become dismantled due to the practice of yoga. Others, thinking they know better, have laughed at me and said that I, I don't know what I'm talking about, some of them have even gone so far as to ignorantly straight state that Hatha Yoga is just exercise and it cannot harm anyone. Remember, there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. These reports are meant to serve up as a wake-up call and warning to all who, those who profess to be Christian and yet find themselves stretching out in worship through the yogic poses and the breathing control techniques. If any professing Christian can still justify doing yoga after hearing this report and the forthcoming articles, they might want to think twice about which Jesus they actually worship. Is it the Jesus of the Bible? Because he would never endorse any kind of yoga, as you will see. Yoga, in any way, shape, or form, has the ability to corrupt the mind and undo a Christian's faith. It, ha it has, as its goal, the conversion of the individual into the occult. And again, this is the whole premise as to why I'm doing these teachings on martial arts, acupuncture, yoga. Because ultimately, what is Satan's goal behind all of this stuff? It's that. It's to corrupt the mind and undo a Christian's faith, conversion of the, of the individual into the occult in a pantheistic world view. As we shall see, Christian yoga, like all yoga, is part of the occult-based Hindu religion. Relabeling yoga for undiscerning Westerners doesn't change the fact. I, I can't even stand the term Christian yoga. Do you know that I've actually seen reports now where they've come out with uh, this thing termed as Christian pornography? I've actually seen... They've actually got Christian pornography uh, movies that have been made. I, I reported on this a long time ago on one of my email lists. Well, when you say Christian yoga, I, I kind of think along the same lines as Christian pornography. It's two words that do not belong together, that, that have nothing to do with one another. And you can try to candy coat the veneer all you want, but it doesn't change the fact that it's evil. Now, this is a subject that I have, again a lot of experience with, as my mom has participated in this ever since I've been a small child. So I've grown up in a household that actively promoted yoga. My mom even got this one lady so involved that she started her own studio and now has traveled all over the world, going to all of the masters and to all the various parts of the world, India, China, Japan, and now, you know, she's got all these certifications and degrees and these types of things, and you can't even talk to her. She's so far out there um, because of all the demonic infestation that she has, yet she doesn't see it. She's also a strict vegetarian. She looks incredibly unhealthy, and yet supposedly she has it so together because she's in all these, uh, she's certified in all these uh, yogic and new age healing techniques. And my mom was really responsible for getting her involved in, in all that, and she's proud of that. You know, she's... She's proud of that, but she's, it's like, you know, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. My mom, I'm not saying she's doing it because she's wanting to overtly be evil. She thinks what she's doing is a good thing. She thinks that it's exercise and meditation and a stress relief and these types, all the classic examples that you hear. Now, my mom's unsaved, and so is my dad, so they don't have any type of Christian mindset to be able to judge or judge these particular issues. But, you know, ever since I've been a little kid, that's what I've known. She bought me, you know, yoga books, tried to get me involved. And, and I did, to a certain extent, a little bit of this stuff. Um, you know, it's just 
I have a lot of experience with this. This next report starts off by saying, across the Western world, professing Christians are participating in New Age practices such as contemplative spirituality, labyrinth, and yoga. Now, the labyrinth, that's a little bit of a complex subject, but there's all type of these New Age, what they call contemplative Christianity, that they're talking about infiltrating the churches through things like Rick Warren and the Purpose Driven Life and, and a lot of the different um, authors that are being promoted by some of the big wigs in the pseudo-Christian industry like Rick Warren, um, Robert Schuller, and these types of things. I've talked a lot about this in the past. Probably the best Christian resource, if you want to know, if you really want to get your boat loaded on this subject, on every aspect of this new age infiltrating the church, the contemplative Christianity, would be the website's www.lighthousetrailsresearch.com. They have a newsletter you can subscribe to. They send out about one a week. And it's, it'll load your boat. I mean, you, you'll get about as much as you could want. And again, it's Lighthouse Trails Research, just spelled like, just like it sounds, dot com. And, uh, or you could do a keyword search for Lighthouse Trails Research. And I would highly advise you, if, you know, you get on their newsletter list and, and uh, everything's free. So if we go further, these things like contemplative spirituality, labyrinth, yoga, all of which is preparing the way for something much more darker and sinister. It's paving the way for the Antichrist and the one world religion to rise. This is the goal. Satan is trying to condition the world and particularly the church, which is just really his only threat on this earth at least. It's trying to condition and leaven the world to such an extent where the Antichrist is ready to make his arrival, to rise to power. The history is riddled with professing Christians who, for whatever reason, turned their backs on Jesus Christ, became apostates, and worked overtime to destroy Christianity. So a lot of people that have got into these things at one time were self-professed Christians. They get into this stuff like yoga, contemplative Christianity, all these other things that, that go along with this that we've done many reports on. And all of a sudden, you know, they start falling away. They get a totally different view of the Bible. Because you can't serve two masters. You can't bow the knee to Baal and to Christ. You've got to make, you've got to choose whom this day, who you're going to serve, like Joshua did. Okay? God will always put you in a position where you're going to have to make that choice. And most people are going to, uh, unfortunately, make it in the wrong direction. Concerned loving parents go to great extremes to protect their children from alcohol and drugs. They teach their children at an early age to look both ways before crossing the street, don't talk to strangers. However, in many cases, these same parents fail to monitor their children before and during church-related activities, such as vacation Bible school, out-of-town retreats, church recreational programs, and because the activity is tagged as Christian and sponsored by their church, they, ass they assume everything is on the up and up. While wholesome church-related activities and programs for children do exist, forces of darkness are working overtime to deceive and victimize their, their kids. We're going to talk more about this later. Turning them away from the true and living God at an early age, after all, is there a better way to preserve the future of paganism than to indoctrinate the children at the earliest possible age? See, if Satan can get you when you're a little kid, all the more better. And it's a proven fact that most people get saved at an early age. So if he can corrupt you during your formative years... You know, he's happy all the way around. And it is the fact that children who are introduced to the so-called Christian yoga stand the chance of further involvement uh, in, in the future. Worst case scenario is total rejection of the one who loves them the most, Jesus Christ. So this is something we have to really watch out for. Oh, and last week we had talked about martial arts. And uh, I had talked about this guy. This is an example of this that was, had his own dojo and uh, participated in a martial art called Kuk Sul Wan. And he was, you know, I don't know, whatever degree black belt, had his own dojo locally. And he had come into the local uh, independent fundamental Baptist church and said, oh, I want to do this class and we're going to teach karate or whatever he teaches, martial arts. And, we're, and uh, one of the ladies called me and was complaining. She said, you know, this doesn't seem right. My kid's coming home telling me they're doing meditative exercises. They're doing breathing exercises. I said, oh, there's, I, I said, number one, there's no place for this in the church. And number two, what you're describing are new age um, meditative techniques 
which ultimately, you know, gets you involved into this whole empty mind thing, which is one of the goals of the New Age, is to empty the mind so that the demons can come in and infest you. So I, I basically voiced my opinion on it, got back to the church hierarchy, they pulled the program, and the guy called me up screaming at me, you know, obviously wanting to intimidate me, wanting me to come down to his dojo. He was going to show me how wonderful it was and how he teaches respect and all these other great things. And, and you know what? The Satan's always going to put out some carrot. There's always going to be some apparent benefit from doing something that's not of God. Even if it has a, a nice veneer like, oh, we bow, we show respect, we do this, we, it's good exercise. It doesn't matter. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. You do not want to uh, yoke yourselves up with unbelievers as well, which is what you're doing when you participate in these types of techniques. And even if the people in the room are supposedly all, all believers, where did the technique spawn from? From unbelievers, from typically Eastern uh, religion, religious practices like Hinduism, Buddhism, Confucianism, Taoism. All of these are intertwined, and you think that you can do things like this and it not affect you? It doesn't happen that way. A little leaven, leaven at the whole lump. And if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? So then what is yoga? Yoga is considered exercises, physical, mental, and or spiritual, based on Eastern metaphysical assumptions designed to aid in supposed self-enlightenment and self-realization. The goals sometimes include altered states of consciousness or uniting the practitioner with the impersonal pantheistic God pantheistic is like God is in everything, you know, that bench over there is a God, and that canoe is a God, and that toaster muffin is a God, or, you know, stuff like that, it's just craziness, you know, we're all gods, but isn't that the same lie that Satan tried to perpetrate on Eve in the Garden of Eden, he did it successfully, he says, you know, the carrot was, you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil, and that was enough for, to get her to eat the forbidden fruit, so, it's the same old lie, it's the same New Age lie, and this is a New Age doorway. See, a lot of times people get into yoga, let's say they go to their, their local exercise place or whatever, their local gym, and they're offering a class in yoga, and that's the indoctrination. That's how Satan gets his foot in the door to get these people to actually really start exploring this. And if you get into yoga, you're going to be getting into the occult. You have to. Types of yoga include karma yoga, which is the spiritual union through correct conduct, Oh, whatever that means. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but then there are other ways of death. The Bible says, For we are all together as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags. Isaiah 64, 6. So, I mean, come on. Correct conduct? All of our righteousness, apart from the Lord Jesus Christ, is as a filthy rag. So, that's, that's a... <clears throat> give me a break on that. Then there's bhakti yoga, which is the spiritual union spiritual union through devotion to a guru. Now, this is what Doug practices. I didn't want to say anything, but, you know. Now, I do a different type of yoga. I'm just kidding. Teasing. <laughs> yeah, I'm Doug's guru. Yeah. <laughs> so, that we actually have a small picture of me here that we all burn incense to seven times a day and we bow to Mecca in my honor. I, You know, I didn't want to say anything. I didn't want to get too puffed up or anything like that. You know, just... Anyway. little little humor there. Yeah. <laughs> So, so then there's, yeah, karma yoga, uh, spiritual union through correct conduct, bhakti yoga, spiritual union through devotion to a guru. And then there's yana yoga, <laughs> spiritual union through hidden knowledge. Ooh, that's like the Gnostic yoga. And then there's the raja yoga, spiritual union through mental control. It's like Baskin Robbins, you know, there's a different flavor, satanic flavor for every delight. Uh, then there's Hatha Yoga, spiritual union through control or meditation. You see how this is so self-centered? It's always about the person and, and something that they're doing. And I've said this before, there's only two, religious, two religions in the world. There's only two. There's Bible-believing Christianity, which regarding salvation, you cannot earn it. For you are saved by grace, through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works. Why? Lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 14, 6. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3, 16. 
Bible-believing Christianity, and then you have all the other isms. Hinduism, Buddhism, Catholicism, this nonsense we're talking about. All these different forms of yoga, which is where you achieve whatever it is you're trying to achieve, whether you call it enlightenment, whether you call it a better uh, rung on the karma wheel of life, or a better rung in your next reincarnation cycle, or whether you call it uh, heaven, or hell, or paradise, whatever you want to call it, every single one of those other religions is based on works. You do boast about works in those religions. Unlike Bible-believing Christianity, which you cannot earn. Only Jesus Christ can pay your sin debt. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have sinned. What is sin? The Bible says the thought of foolishness is sin. So that's like, the if you want to know what would qualify as sin, the thought of foolishness is sin. The Bible says we're born into sin. Okay? Uh, David said in Psalm 51, And in sin did my mother conceive me. I was shaped in iniquity. Okay, that was David saying that. So it's not something you can avoid. We're all sinners. Okay? Now the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 6.23 So the wages of sin, the price of sin is death, death and hell. But the gift of God is through Jesus Christ our Lord. So this is the difference between all the different isms out there of the religious world, and true Bible-believing Christianity, which I will not even put a denominational label on it. Okay? Just true Bible-believing, born-again Christians. And again, you have to understand that all these other, all these other things that we're describing is all man-centered, is all works-centered. You look at Catholicism, you've got to keep the seven sacraments, and you've got to go to the priest of the confessional, and you've got to do this, and you've got to do that. And you're earning your way to wherever you're trying to get to. It's no different with any other religion. So, just wanted to touch on that, too. So, we've got then the Kundalini Yoga, one of my favorites. Uh, the spiritual union through focusing on inner energy. We're going to talk, be talking more about these in depth later. And then you have the Tantric Yoga, which is the spiritual union through sexual practices. Yes, there's Tantric Yoga. We're going to be talking more about that, too. And that's considered what they call sex yoga. Okay? And in that particular type of yoga, they do all kind of unbelievably nasty stuff like eating their own feces and drinking their own urine and stuff like that. That gets into more the Hindu, actually, Ayurvedic. It's, it's an off-branch of the Hindu Ayurvedic healing system, tantric yoga. It comes to my mind now. Yoga philosophy is based on the concept of reincarnation, which is what my mom totally believes in. Why? Well, because that's what she's been indoctrinated in. I mean, of whom a man is overcome, the same he is brought into bondage, right? That's what the Bible says. Of whom a man is overcome, the same he is brought into bondage. That's why it's so important for you not to follow or put your faith in any man. You put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and His Word. Now, I'm not saying a man is always going to lead you astray if he's following the Word of God, but you won't want to put your faith in that man. Yeah, the, the whole concept of reincarnation um, is... You know, from it's it's drawn from what they call the up Upanishads and other Hindu scriptures. Okay, whereas reincarnation, you know, we're we're trying to get it right in this life, but if we don't get it life right in this life, then we might come back as you know a dung beetle or something bad. Okay, and, and people, and that's why in India they have their different caste. They call them caste systems, and that's why there's absolutely no compassion. Because in India, if you see somebody wallowing in a ditch with ants covering them or something, and you walk by them, you think, oh, well, that's karma. They, they, they did something either in this life or in a former life that got them in that situation. Now, I understand what comes around goes around, and you reap what you sow. But there's no compassion on the person, because they think, oh, you know, hey... And people that are born in these higher caste systems are treated like, with, like royalty. And the ones in the lower caste systems, like the untouchables and these types of people, are kind of treated like dirt. And that's why that's such a sick place if you go visit it. Because what is that breed? It's a, it's a satanic mess. The people that go over to India, this, this friend of my mom's that I mentioned... She went over there, and she's supposedly a real spiritual, you know, have-it-together type of person. And supposedly when she came back from there, my dad asked her about how it went over in India, and she was using all kind of explicit, ex explicative profanities in order to describe, and I've never even heard her cuss, but she was so turned off 
by what she saw in India. And here she is, Mrs. New Age Guru Kingpin. She was so reviled by what was going on over in India and the way that the women were treated that she had nothing good to say. They worship the god of feces over there. That's one of their main deities they worship. And I've said this before. There was this documentary I saw one time where they were the, these people that worship this god of feces. They would take the cow dung, they would use it to cook their food in the fires, um, and then they would use it. They would take it and they would put it in water, and and in and, and then put it all over their floors and make the floors real real shiny with the um, with the cow feces. And the cows could actually come into the house because they believe the cows are like the, the sacred cow, you know, where we get that term. Well, this is where we kind of get it from. And that they were, you know, they could go anywhere, do whatever they wanted. They were this, they were in this upper position in their, their system. And then they went to this, this reporter went to this, one of the most famous temples there in India, uh, one of the most popular, where they sacrificed to this god of feces. And there was this big temple, and they were outside, and they couldn't, they were all wearing gas masks, the, the reporters. Literally, they were wearing gas masks, not just little things to cover their mouth. And they were outside, and they were showing that this thing that went on before they went inside, and they had this goat there, and these Indian guys were, they, I mean, it did, I, I didn't even watch it, I didn't want to see it, but they hacked off this goat's head right on the camera. They had machetes, they were hacking this goat, this live goat's head off. Because they were sacrificing this goat to this god of feces. And then they would take feces from, I don't know, I guess themselves and other animals, into this temple of feces and dedicate it to this god. This is the depravity that goes on in India. And in, Now, does it mean I don't want them to get saved? No, I pray to God they all get saved. I really do. But that is how dark this place is. Literally, when people go over there, it stinks so bad that many of them will wear gas masks through the streets. To, to, Because if you're a Westerner or somebody that's not used to this, you can't imagine the depravity of, of what goes on over there. So, you know, don't anyway, don't think I'm opinionated on that or anything, but uh, that's pretty much the truth from what I've been told and from first-hand accounts of people that have, that have went over there. Very, very dark place. Uh, now, if we talk about this article, is entitled Yoga, Relaxation or Occult. Yoga is from the Sanskrit word yug, meaning union with the divine or your higher self. Yoga is supposedly a path for transcending the ordinary mind, who you think you are, in order to merge with your higher self or your God self. Again, it's always about attaining Godhood, you know. I will be like the Most High. I will ascend under the sides of the North, just like Satan did. The root of all sin is self-centeredness, pretty much. And the first sin that was ever committed, ever, was when Satan fell. And that was the thoughts that were in his mind. I want to be like the Most High. I, I'm jealous of God. You know, and this is, this is the, evidently the temptation for man. Now, I'm sorry, I don't want to be, I don't want to be God. If I was God, I'd mess everything up. I know I would, okay? I'm not qualified. But so many people, that's what motivates them, especially in the New Age. The word yoga means to yoke. To yoke with Brahman. Now, Brahman is the infinite and the universal spirit, the impersonal uh, force the Hindus call God. So this is what the word yoga means. Now, do you see any conflict of interest here with Christianity? Just a teensy bit? I mean, just a little. You know, yoga means to yoke. To yoke with Brahman. The infinite universal spirit. The impersonal force Hindus call God, via the realization of an altered state of consciousness, hereby theoretically releasing oneself from the bondage of the endless reincarnation cycle. Now, my mom told me the last time she explored her whole reincarnation thing, my little girl just told me the other day she was joking with my mom, and, and she says, oh, oh, grandma, and she's joking. And she says, yeah, I was a dung beetle in a former life. And my grandma, my mom was like, oh, yeah, really? It's like she believed her. Uh, you know, what do you do? And my mom has flat out told me that she said yes when I was in uh, went to this uh, psychic that does past life regression. All lies from the pit of hell. Now I've got a whole I've got a whole um, teaching I've done on this. And um, I'm trying to remember the keyword search you would do. It, it has to do with witchcraft and uh, past life experiences and these types of things. Um, where we really talk about this in depth because this whole past life regression is a mighty tool of Satan. 
in order to take a lot of people to hell. Because if people think that they had a past life or they were reincarnated, that means you can throw the Bible out the door. All you have to do for Satan is get him to believe in that one thing, and it totally negates the word of God. Because the Bible says, is appointed unto man once to die, and after this the judgment. Once to die. Okay? Absent from the body, from a, for a Christian, is to be present with the Lord. It doesn't mean absent from the body is to go through reincarnation and to come back as a dung beetle. Or, most of the time, what you'll hear is people, when they go through these past life rejections, uh, regressions, was, oh yes, I was Cleopatra, queen of the Nile in a former life. Why? Because that so much feeds the ego. So, oh wow, I was Cleopatra. Well, you know what, I think there's about a million Cleopatras that were reincarnated out there, because I, I can't tell you how many times people come back and I was this famous person. I was Mark Twain. I was Alexander the Great. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah. But again, that appeals to the self-centered side of human nature to come back. Now, my mom told me in her former life, she was a little Dutch boy. She said she even saw visions of her as a little Dutch boy in these streets in like the Netherlands. Now, could you imagine though, if you were, if you were not a Christian and you had went through this hypnotic regression, how powerful that would seem, particularly if you actually seen real images of supposedly yourself in a former life? Now, here, let me tell you how this works. The familiar spirits that are essentially possessing my mom, or anyone that would go through this, are painting and giving her images of, most likely, somebody's past life. These spirits have been around for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Just because someone dies don't mean they die. They live on. They go into other people. So a familiar spirit that was possessing someone three or four or five hundred years ago can easily resurrect those same images and put them, particularly if the person's asking for it and if they're open to it, they can put those images right into their head and they seem real. How can, how can, that, how can you reconcile that with Bible-believing Christianity? And the more somebody participates in it, the less likely they'll ever get saved. Now, I'm not saying the Lord can't save my mom. I'm praying she does, and my dad. But I'm just saying the longer you participate in something, the more Satan gets his hooks into you. And the harder it is for you to see the truth. Or if you're going to see the truth, it's going to take a lot of typical severity of God in order to get you woken up. And that's what I pray for those types of people. You know, God, if you have to hang them over hell for a day, in order to, you know, whatever it takes in order to get them to wake up and get saved, better they, you hang them over hell for a day than they burn in hell for eternity. So, if we go further, yoga comes out of the Hindu Vedas. It can be traced back to Patanjali who was a religious leader. Shiva was one of Hinduism's three most powerful gods, also known as the destroyer. Shiva really, from what I've seen, is the most powerful god of Hinduism. Uh, he is called the Yoga Swari, or the Lord of Yoga. Did you know Shiva was called that? Because my mom talks about Shiva. She'll bring that up. I'll say, oh yeah, Shiva, the, the god of destruction. Oh, well, that's not what we're taught. Well, mom, it's well known in, in the Hindu hierarchy that Shiva's the god of destruction. He has, a, he has a daughter named Kali. Kali is the god of death, goddess of death. She has six arms. Two of them have um, heads. They have human severed heads and then plates to catch the blood underneath them. The two lower arms have the plates to catch the blood. The two arms in the middle have the heads. And the two arms up top have like swords so they can kill you. Yeah, that's Shiva. That's Kali. That's Shiva's daughter, supposedly. Yeah, and this is all, there's no conflict here with Christianity, right? You know? So, you, you see, you know, evil communications corrupt good manners and, and, you know, a little leaven leaven at the whole lump and have no unfruitful work, fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Flee all appearance of evil. Set no wicked thing before my eyes. There's a lot of verses that, you know, you really have to ignore in order, you know, to lay a stumbling block before your brother. What if you get into this thinking, oh, it's all harmless in this, and you encourage a whole bunch of other Christians into the same new age, and then they go into it, and let's say you get out of it, but they fall into perdition. Well, you've laid a stumbling block before your brother, which is something that we're forbidden to do. We're supposed to err on the side of safety. Even if you're not convinced from what I'm saying, you ought to be convinced about the, the associations that you would have if you do this particular practice, and how it may be laying a stumbling block before your brother, of which, if you're a Christian, you're going to have to give an account for it, the judgment seat of Christ. You don't want to do this. 
You want to turn many to righteousness, as the book of Daniel says. You want to, you want to turn many to true knowledge and to the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't want to be responsible for, for someone going to hell because you, you led them down the wrong path or encouraged them to go down that path because you said it was no big deal. I mean, you know, do I love you enough to tell you the truth? Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth, according to Galatians 4.16? Consider the following portion from an article from a secular newspaper. It is estimated that there are 10,000 yoga teachers in the United States who teach between 4 and 5 million students a week. Man, that's a lot of people they're reaching. Yoga is a program that involves conscious stretching, deliberate movements, controlled breathing, and relaxation exercises. Its purpose is to develop strength, flexibility, balance, body alignment, body awareness, muscular balance, calmness, and controlled breathing. Yoga originated from a school of thought in the Hindu religion which suggests that postures can isolate the soul from the body and the mind. Just what I want to do. In the Western world, yoga is used mainly as a form of exercise. Yoga comes from, and that's the, that's the carrot. Oh, it's just exercise. No, it's a lot more than exercise. You're getting the package deal. Sorry. I mean, I'm sorry. I, I do, like, if, if I go and if I'm going to work out or do something like that, yes, I do stretch before. But I don't get into any yoga postures or any controlled breathing or, or recite some mantra or get my Hindu prayer beads out. Yeah, I'll, I'll do any of that. None of that. I don't have a problem with stretching. Okay? But the problem is, is that this is a package deal. Okay? Don't even call it yoga at all. If you're just going to stretch, okay, that's one thing. But if you... If you get into the realm of yoga, where you get into the postures, and you get into the breathing, and you get into the meditative state, now you've crossed over the line. Yoga comes from the word Sanskrit, yoga, which means to join. Yoga means to join body, mind, and uh, to breathe, to get them to work in harmony. It is very gentle, slow, and meditative, but it requires concentration. Yoga instructors say that they have received a handful of complaints from people who believe yoga is intertwined with the mysticism and occult. Yes, it's only a handful. Because there's very few Christians that, are, that even care about the information that I'm telling you today. They could care less. Doesn't matter. They're lukewarm. They're content to stay lukewarm. They're increased in goods. They're rich. They think they're in need of nothing. Particularly in America. I'm not talking about other areas of the world so much as I am America. It's no big deal to them. Every yoga teacher is in effect a Hindu or a Buddhist missionary. Even though he or she may wear a cross and insist that Jesus was a great yogi. Oh, I got this the, the, the letter from the guy last week on the martial arts, the Mr. 10th uh, degree black belt and five time inducted in the Hall of Fame and bragging. Yeah, he told me, he, they, they gave him this thing when he left, I guess the martial uh, arts uh, system, and they referred to Jesus as the great sensei, like the great sensei in the sky. Now, you, you see sensei, they'll say they bow to sensei, it's like their master type of deal. Yeah, that's how they refer. Well, you know, they say here, insist that Jesus was a great yogi, and protest that yoga is not a religion, but science. This is the most blatant of lies. Yet, this has been so widely proclaimed... And believed in American schools beginning in kindergarten in almost every other area of society today. Yoga and other forms of Hindu-Buddhist occultism are taught and accepted as science. In contrast, Christianity has been thrown out of the schools and is being crowded out of every area of our life in the broad-minded move to replace religion with the New Age science. See, they're very liberal and forgiving to these New Age principles when they incorporate them into the schools and every aspect of our lives. But Christianity, on the other hand, is totally rejected. Yoga is clearly a New Age concept is deeply and religious, that is deeply religious and pantheistic in its origin and is widely practiced and supported by New Age proponents. The New Age movement denies the reality of sin, total depravity, and believes that man is generally good and is actually divine. Remember, this is an attainment of your God self. They teach that there is a God within us. And we are to harness that and develop it through meditation and other metaphysical techniques. Teach us that the only thing needed to enlightenment, the only thing people need is enlightenment regarding their own divinity. In other words, if we don't know, we need to know about it so we can cultivate our own divinity. They believe that through reincarnation, man is reunited with God. They believe in karma, which is a debt one owes because of his previous life. They also believe and teach evolution of man as opposed to creation that is taught in the Bible. 
the evolution like Charles Darwin. Yoga is also associated with imagery, visualization, hypnosis, mind magic, chanting of the mantra, positive thinking, silva mind techniques. Silva, that's, I think they've got like schools now, the silva learning centers. I'd void them like the plague. See how subtle this is? These things are not only unbiblical, but they're, they're very potentially very dangerous. When practiced by professing believers, it allows a certain external spiritual influence into our lives, which is inconsistent and disallowed, according to 2 Corinthians 6, 14-18, in the teachings of the Holy Scriptures. Let's just go ahead and read that real quick. 2 Corinthians 6, 14. Now, I know I've said this quite a bit, but let's just go ahead and read the whole thing. 14-18. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Well, if you go to a yoga class as a Christian, okay, how can you not be unequally yoked together with, with unbelievers? Okay, I mean, this because this is a religious thing, okay, that you're doing. This is, a, this is a religion that incorporates many other Eastern mysticism religions into it. Okay, Hinduism, Buddhism, there's so many things that are incorporated into this. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and communion hath with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial, or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? Now again, this affects your testimony too. Well, what type of example are you setting? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. We are. We're the temple of the living God. As God has said, I dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Do you think that participating in yoga is touching an unclean thing? Hopefully you've already proven that. We're going to give you a whole lot more to look at here. So, this is something that we really need to, to uh, bear in mind. The practice of yoga is pagan at best, and blatant witchcraft at worst. Its teachings emanate from Eastern religions, all of which teach that self is God. Here's a quote from The Seduction of Christianity, page 54. The goal of yoga is self-realization, to look deeply within what ought to be the temple of the only true God, and there to discover the alleged true self or higher self and declare self to be God. Nothing could be more religious than that. True. And it flies in the face of Bible-believing Christianity and the Word of God. Yet, with straight faces, all the yogis insist that practicing yoga will not change anyone, anyone's religious beliefs. This is the religion of the Antichrist. And for the first time in history, it is being widely practiced throughout the Western world as transcendental meditation and other forms of yoga. One of the key players that brought transcendental meditation is the Marahashi yogi guy that was the yogi for, um, and I don't mean yogi bear, and boo-boo. I mean, yogi, the other kind. Anyway, sorry, a little humor. Um, the guy that was the yogi for the Beatles, which inspired many, many, many of the songs that they sang and these types of things, okay? So, that was where Transcendental Meditation came into being in America, through that particular yogi guy. Now, he just recently died, um... Going further, yoga calls itself science. By calling itself science, yoga, which at its very heart is Hinduism, has within the last 30 years become an integral part of Western society, where it is taught in nearly every YMCA or YWCA, in clubs and public schools and industry and many churches. Dressed in Western clothes, yoga has gained acceptance in medicine, psychology, education, and religion under such euphemisms as centering or relaxation therapy. Especially now when you have all of the people that are under so much quote, stress, we'll have some, it's some outlet for stress. That's all it is. You know, it seems harmless enough. Uh, it's also incorporated into self-hypnosis and creative visualization. Yoga is designed to lead the realization of one's true godhood through an inward meditative journey that finally locates the ultimate source of everything within the human psyche. That's from page 110 of the Seduction of Christianity. Hatha Yoga... It's a popular form of yoga practiced today by those looking for a form of relaxation and non-strenuous exercise. Joanna Michelson, however, correctly discerns, she says, quote, There is a common misconception in the West that Hatha Yoga, one of about ten forms of yoga, 
that supposedly leads to self-realization is merely a neutral form of exercise, a soothing and effective alternative for those abhorring jogging and calisthenics. However, Hatha Yoga is one of the six recognized systems of Orthodox Hinduism, one of the six recognized systems of this religion, and at its roots, roots is religious and mystical. It is also one of the most difficult and potentially spiritually dangerous forms of yoga. The term Hatha is derived from the verb Hath, which means to oppress. What the practice of Hatha Yoga is designed to do is suppress the flow of psychic energies through the psychic passages on either side of the spinal column, thereby forcing the serpent power or the kundalini force to rise through the central psychic channel in the spine and up and down through the chakras. Now, I'm going to have Doug do a little demonstration for us here in a second, and we're going to see... Of course, you guys won't be able to see. I'm sorry, I don't have a camera. Oh, well, we'll, we'll save it for next time or something. Yeah, the, the, we'll, we'll, he's going to do the death howl next week, too. We, we talked about that last week in the martial arts. and uh, You know, we're going you know, to really give you the full deal here. Anyway, sorry. Um, so... This whole thing, uh, then it goes on to say, the supposed psychic centers of the human personality and power, Westerners mistakenly believe that one can practice Hatha Yoga apart from the philosophical and religious beliefs that undergird it. A little leaven, leaven at the whole lump. This is an absolute false belief. You cannot separate the exercise from the philosophy. The movements themselves become a form of meditation. The continued practice of the exercises will whether you intend it or not, influence and influence you toward an Eastern mystical perspective. This is what it's meant to do. There is, by definition, no such thing as neutral yoga. That was a quote from Like Lambs to the Slaughter, page 93 through 95. Other types of yoga. Now, again, I've said this before, but this is like the satanic Baskin-Robbins ice cream. You know, a flavor to please even the most discerning palate. Okay, so this is what we're going to be talking about. You've got all these different flavors of yoga. I had no idea there was this many kinds of yoga you could do. But there's something here, you know, to please every bit of self-centered, you know, recesses of the mind. There's something here to, to appeal to that. And you're going to see why in a second. First we have Laya Yoga, which is the path of the universal body. In Laya Yoga, the macrocosm, or the universe, is directly networked with the microcosm, the human body. Now remember, when we talked about acupuncture, that was the reason that guy, T. Hung or whatever, developed the acupuncture system, because he looked up in the scars, he said, that's the macrocosm, it must relate to our microcosm of our body. This, there's a lot of similarities there. There are five centers or chakras or wheels along the spine, and and one between the eyebrows that directly corresponds with some aspect of creation. These chakras are linked... Now, this is what they believe, okay? The chakras are linked through the etheric channel along the spine. A primordial creative energy, or kundalini, lies dormant at the base of the spine at the root of the chakra. The laya yogi, through meditation and posture exercises, will coax this kundalini energy into traveling up the channel through each chakra until it reaches a point of the origin at the top of the skull. At that point, the yogi will have merged with the source of creation, or steam will come out of his ears. Just kidding. Teasing. Anyway, if the yoga then chooses to reverse the process, the kundalini energy will travel back down the channel, recharging each center with an increased amount of prana. I can't stand these new commercials they got on now. You, you can get prana sleep. Have you seen this, these commercials? Oh, yeah. Yeah, prana sleep, where this guy, they've got this guy. I want to buy one of those mattresses just because of the commercial. Prana sleep, you probably get a big fat demon with every mattress. No extra charge. So anyway, prana is the life force of the energy. That's what that word means. The result, but you see how they're trying to indoctrinate us into this new age? Really, this is, the, this is going to be the essence of the coming one world new age religion. Is Yes, it's witchcraft. And yes, there's going to be great lines, signs, and wonders, but it's going to be New Age at its core. It's going to incorporate a lot of these different religious aspects into it. This is going to be part of it, okay? And they're trying to indoctrinate us to this on, you know, TV and ads and different ways. So, ending here, it says, The result is that the yogi will then have more understanding of and control over all aspects of creation each time this process is done. Then there's karma yoga. The path of selfless action. The action performed for the purpose of satisfying a desire has the effect of generating new desires that require additional actions. Addiction to pleasure in any form, 
is a good example of this. Once the desire is satisfied, it generates more desire, which needs to be satisfied ad infinitum. In karma yoga, one seeks to end the cycle by not being attached to the outcome of anything he does. Actions are thus performed based on what seems appropriate to a given situation. Well, the Bible says there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirits. So, this whole karma yoga is based on what seems appropriate to the person in a given situation. But the Bible says he who trusteth in his own heart is a fool. Proverbs 28, 26. Uh, Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? That's what this whole form of yoga is based on. The person performing the action has no con concern about whether the result is good or bad. Since the actions are not performed for self-gratification, the person is free from any hindrances between good and bad results. As a result of not being attached to any outcome, a person can be completely involved in whatever he's doing. In this way, the yogi seeks to end the internal cycle of death and rebirth. Whatever that means. Now, you'll hear this by a lot of people that get really, 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 really high into the occult. That they say, yes, I've, I've crossed over. I, I now transcend good and evil. There is no good in evil. And they can go, and a guy like Aleister Crowley can molest and sodomize some little boy and then kill him as a child sacrifice, which he bragged about doing, and say, it doesn't matter. This is neither good or evil. I have attained godhood, and I, I transcend good and evil. It doesn't apply to me anymore, because I am my own god. That's what they believe. They get that delusional. Well, I can see how this form of yoga would lead you down that path, because that's what they say they're doing. They have no concern about whether the end is either, quote, good or bad. They've transcended those mere concepts. Then there's jhana yoga, or if it's called yana, jhana, I don't know. The path of transcendental knowledge. This type of yoga is geared toward those who have intellectual curiosity, who like to reason and analyze. See how there's different ones to, to appeal to different people? The ordinary mind supposedly can never ultimately know, uh, can know ultimately and absolutely. Well, yes it can, because we have the word of God. Okay, but they say we can't. Therefore, the goal is for the ordinary mind to realize that and thereby get out of the way. In effect, one uses the ordinary mind to transcend the, to transcend the ordinary mind. Gradually, the ordinary mind reveals its true nature to itself. In the, quote, who am I inquiry, as taught by the great Indian guru Ramana Maharashi. I believe that might have been the Indian, the Beatles guru. The mind's false identities are discounted one by one until it is, it is exhausted. Once the mind has exhausted all of its answers, then the higher self may emerge. Give me a break. Then the next one, Bhakti Yoga, the path of devotion. Bhakti yoga is considered the simplest of all yogas. Bhakti is practiced in self-surrender for the purpose of eventually identifying with the source of love or of higher self. It is not unlike devotion and service associated with religion in the West. The yogi selects a saint, guru, or another figure to direct his devotional love to. So this is where they literally have pictures of these people that they can sometimes erect small shrines to. I know I joked about that earlier. But they, they, they erect small shrines to, they burn candles, they, and they pray to these things. They worship someone and they direct supposedly this love. It's witchcraft is what they're doing. I don't care what they call it. What a waste, what an absolute total abhorrent waste of time. Can you imagine wasting your time on this junk? But yes, they, they direct this devotional love. Every act of daily life is done to serve this beloved one. Crazy. Visualizations and mantras are also part of the bhakti yoga practice. Well, you know, again, if you do this so much for thou shalt no, serve no other gods and have no other gods before me, you know, all those Bible verses. The goal is to visualize the beloved one all the time. At first, one may have a picture or representation to look at the visualization to look at while the visualization skill is developed. The sound is repeated at the same time of the vis visualization. Like this mantra, although there are many words that can be selected, the sound of om um, is the one they usually use. You ever see these guys in there, you know, the classic, they're in the lotus position, they've got their little, you know, hand gestures, and, you know, they're contemplating their navel while they're meditating on some guru. Well, that's pretty much what you're getting into here. This practice is especially suitable for people with intense emotional natures. 
And then we have the Raja Yogi, which is the path of stillness. In Raja Yoga, the goal is to quiet the mind through meditation, where the attention is fixed on an object, the mantra or the concept. Whenever the mind wanders, it is brought back to whatever is the object of the concentration. In time, the mind will cease wandering and become completely still, allowing the demons to fully come in and possess you to the toenails. A state of focused, uninterrupted concentration will occur. From this state, the yogi will eventually merge with the higher self. And then there's Kriya Yoga. I've never even heard of any of these. But understand, this is, all these are on equal footing with one another. So you can go, like I said, and you participate with this. Look at what, look at what you're yoking yourself up with here. Kriya Yoga, or Babaji's Kriya Yoga, is a scientific art of the perfect God-truth union and self-realization. God-lie union, they should say. The great master of India, Babaji Nagarag revived it as a synthesis of ancient teachings of the 18 Sita tradition. Kriya Yoga claims to bring about an integrated transformation of the individual in all five planes of existence. Physical, vital, mental, intellectual, spiritual. It includes 144 techniques or Kriyas grouped into five phases or branches. This is just unbelievable. Kriya Hatha Yoga which includes physical postures and relaxation, muscular locks, gestures, which bring about greater health, blah, blah, blah. Uh, then Kriya Kundalini Pranayama. Wow! Now that's a mouthful. Kriya Kundalini Pranayama. Sounds like a ice cream flavor or something. I don't know. Rudy Tooty Fresh and Fruity. I... I the potential technique is a powerful breathing exercise to awaken a powerful latent energy and circulate it through the seven principal chakras. It awakens their corresponding physical states and makes one a dynamo on all five planes of existence. Again, where do I sign up? I mean, this is, sounds great. And then there's the Kriya Dhyanana Yoga. Meditation, scientific art of mastering the mind, cleanses the subconscious, brings about a breathless state of communion with God. And then there's the Kriya Mantra Yoga, the mental repetition of subtle sounds to awaken the intuition, the intellect, the chakras. The mantra becomes a substitute for the eye-centered chatter. It facilitates the accumulation of a great amount of, great amount of energy. What it's doing is it's witchcraft. Now, the Bible says to avoid vain repetition in prayer, but they encourage it. This also leaves out the rosary beads of the Catholic Church, which is vain repetition. You know, they, like the, Jesus said, they think they'll hear me by their, by their vain repetition and their much speaking, it doesn't impress Jesus Christ. But you know, where the Catholics got their rosary beads was from the Hindu prayer beads. That's where they originated from. Because the Hindus are all about that vain repetition prayer. You know, so that's where that all came from. And then there's the Kriya Bhakti Yogi. Devotional activities and service to awaken the pure, divine, universal love and spiritual bliss. It includes chanting, singing, ceremonies, pilgrimages, and worship. Yeah. <laughs> There's some for everybody here. So if, if someone's interested in physical exercises that are designed to help one's body, he should not practice yoga, which is, which is designed to induce spiritual death and teaches how to reach this state of consciousness where one gets a better reincarnation. Yeah, I, you know, I moved up on the karma wheel today. Even the physical positions of yoga come right out of the Hindu scriptures. They are designed to put one into a state of consciousness where you imagine that you are God. Therefore, Christians who think they, who think they think they're getting relaxation and or exercise are really getting Hinduism. They think they're getting science, but they're getting religion. And they're getting devils. They're getting a nice big load of devils imparted into them. It is mislabeled and it's dangerous. John Weldon and Clifford Wilson wrote a wrote the book Occult Shock and Psychic Forces that yoga is really pure occultism. Hans Ulrich Riker in his book The Yoga of Light also warns that misunderstanding the true nature of yoga can mean death or insanity. Another little known fact is that virtually every major guru in India has issued warnings similar to these. Saying deep breathing techniques such as the ones taught in yoga are a time honored method for entering into altered states of consciousness and for developing the so-called psychic power. Note, yoga, yoga, yoga is one of the basic means of reaching the altered state of consciousness and altered 
uh, state of, is the doorway of the occult. Sir John Achilles, who is the Nobel Prize winner for his research on the brain, said the brain is a machine that a ghost can operate. In a normal state of consciousness, one's own spirit fires off the neurons in the brain and operates his body. We are spirits connected with the body. But in an altered state, reached under drugs, yoga, hypnosis, etc., this passive but alert state, the connection between spirit and brain is loosened. That allows another spirit to interpose itself to begin to fire off the neurons in the brain and create an entire universe of illusion. You've then opened yourself up. It's called sorcery. People are literally teaching themselves how to be demonized and possessed all in the name of developing one's full potential. So now we're going to go to the next part, which is entitled uh, Yoga Exposed. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and break here, and we're going to go to part two next, where we can get the last two parts of this teaching in. We'd like to welcome you back to our current event and weekly Bible study for August 31st, 2008. And this is part two of our study on yoga. And this next part is some information uh, from... In regard to a DVD that's available, it's called Yoga Uncoiled from East to West by Carol Matriciano. They've got some good uh, DVDs that they've gotten exposed in the New Age and witchcraft and these types of things. And uh, it's also subtitled, An Examination of the Practice of Yoga in the Christian Church. Many believe they can practice yoga postures, breathing, focusing techniques devoid of yoga spirituality, not realizing that yoga is an inherent part of the Hindu philosophy which teaches man and nature are one with divinity. Today in yoga is experiencing a worldwide renaissance and in America has more than, now she's claiming at present date, 70,000 yoga teachers working in 20,000 20, locations. Although viewed primarily as fitness instructors, these trainers are real, in reality are missionaries of the Eastern religion of the West. Once viewed by Christians as a pagan import from the East, yoga has now become mainstream in the church through the Christ-centered yoga classes designed to help improve spirituality and experience the presence of God. So they're actually trying to say that we're going to get closer to God with Christian yoga by centering ourselves in these New Age techniques. It doesn't work that way. With critical discernment, this hard-hitting uh, and informative DVD explores the ramifications of dismissing yoga's core spirituality. So if you wanted a DVD about this particular subject, this is something that you'd probably want to get here. You can get it at cuttingedge.org. Just go up there, cuttingedge.org, and do a keyword search for Yoga Uncoiled, and uh, you'll find it there. I'll try to put all this in the PDF format, too, so you'll have it uh, in that format in in conjunction with this particular teaching. Next part is entitled, uh, we're going to talk about uh, Laura Bush. And this article goes on to say, The First Lady Laura Bush has been so bright and pleasant nearly every single day lately that many people have inquired as how she can possibly stay so sunny and cheerful. On July 16th, we learned her secret. No, Laura is not a born-again Christian who is filled with the Holy Spirit. For many months, First Lady Laura Bush, now this is from a news brief, Part of the ladies is, was entitled Part of the First Lady's Day, Yoga Science in Brief, July 16, 2005. First Lady Laura Bush's glowing good looks now have been subject of much commentary in the press. Now the secret of her vibrant health and noticeable weight loss is a matter of public record. Now remember, this is the carrot. Okay. According to India Times Magazine, Laura Bush, like millions of other Americans, are now, have now made yoga a regular part of their physical fitness routine. Hey, if it's good for Laura Bush, it's good enough for me. Exactly what is meant by black and white magic, though. The occult believes that the forces of the universe have allowed each individual the free will to determine for themselves whether they will use the secrets and the powers of the occult for good or evil. If a person chooses to exercise his occultic powers for good, he is said to have embarked upon the right-hand path and is practicing white magic, good witchcraft. Remember, there was the wicked witch of the West and the Wizard of Oz. She was a bad witch. Then we had the good witch of what it was, the East or something. You know, This is the lie. However, if a person chooses to exercise the occultic powers for evil, he is said to have embarked upon the left-hand path and is practicing black magic. For the record, the New Age Dictionary defines the right and left-hand path as follows. The right-hand path is the journey to wisdom based on faith, light, and avoidance of sensual pleasures and perfections. 
that's on page 166, whereas the left-hand path is the tantric path. Remember I said there's a tantric yoga, which is sex yoga? Well, the left-hand path is the tantric path, the way of magic, occultism. Tantra is further defined as meditative sexual union in Hinduism, Buddhism, and yoga. Now, interestingly enough, once Aleister Crowley left the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, because they weren't hardcore enough for him, he started this other organization called the OTO, the Ordo Templar Orientis. And in the Ordo Templar Orientis, and I know because I went up to their website and checked this out for myself, one of the chief tenets of the Ordo Templar Orientis is involved in this tantric sex yoga. And it's so disgusting and reviling and so blasphemous, I can't repeat what they believe. I don't even want to go there. I can't. There's no way I can appropriately put it. Okay? But suffice it to say that, that you know, it, it was good enough for Aleister Crowley. Okay? The great beast. Hitler's early and preparatory reading was ancient Rome, Eastern religions, yoga, occultism, hypnotism, vegetarianism, and astrology. Now that was from the New Age Dictionary. And they openly admit it. Now we have another link between Adolf Hitler and President Bush. Both men are members of the Black Magic Brotherhood of Death, Secret Society. Hitler's Secret Society was called the Thule Society, well known and documented, while President Bush's society was called the Skull and Bone Society of Yale, which is, which is a historical fact. Him and his dad and his dad were all members. They call them Bonesmen. And it's just kind of really funny that, you know, so many of the, the, the uh, previous presidential candidates all graduated from this real select um, fraternity at Yale. And now we learn that First Lady Laura Bush is practicing yoga, the same Eastern mystic meditation religions that Hitler studied. Now, if we want to see the, the spiritual fruits of President Bush, he's got a very good um, document that you can go up to his website, cuttingedge.org, and you scan down on the left-hand side, and it's entitled The Fruits of Bush, or President Bush. And you can see what the actual fruits of this man are. And the Bible says, by you know, their fruit, you shall know them. If we go further, there's a man named Claude Bragdon, and he wrote an introduction to yoga. This book, by the respected author known for his many contributions to occult literature, describes how to use yoga to attain the, an awareness of life by following a specific discipline to merge the consciousness of with that of the universal spirit. It describes the technique of the release of li into life. So if any of you were under any illusions about the danger and the occultism of yoga, you have just listened, learned the truth. Yoga is deeply occultic, even if many of its teachings, quote, work. Whether demons can make a practice work has never been the guide for Christians in determining whether to follow something. Demons can make spectacular things work. And if you think you've seen a lot now, just wait till you see what's in store with the Antichrist and the false prophet and the ascended masters and all the lying signs and wonders that are coming. The question is, will the practice of, is the practice either biblical or unbiblical or occultic? Yoga is occultic. As a result, you need to stay far away from it. There was a news brief that they uh, reference here, and it was entitled, Pope John Paul II receives a mark in the middle of his forehead by a Shiva priestess. This was posted in 1998. We received some very shocking but revealing information about Pope John Paul II from a Christian, from a sister Christian organization, Former Catholics for Christ. In their newsletter, dated uh, January... February, March of 1998, they revealed that Pope John Paul II allowed a Shiva priestess, now remember Shiva, the god of destruction, yeah, same one in Hinduism, he allowed a Shiva priestess to create the traditional Shiva mark on his forehead. Now do you ever see how, like, the Hindu women, they have the little red dot in their forehead, that is symbolic of the third eye, okay, which is symbolic with the pineal gland, which when supposedly an occultist has his third eye fully open, he can see into the spirit world, which is something that they try to attain in the occult. But it's demonic. It's not something you want to try to attain. So she created this traditional Shiva mark on his forehead. Of course, the event will cause any person to sit up and take notice. Those of us who literally believe biblical prophecy in the book of Revelation, the false prophet, the leader of the new Global religion of Antichrist causes all people in the world to take a mark either in the forehead or in the right hand. It's another parallel. Therefore, it is a big deal when a pagan priestess causes a mark to be made on the forehead of the Pope. Most of you probably do not know what the Shiva religion is. 
So we will take a few moments to enlighten you. The New Age Dictionary defines Shiva as the god, the Hindu god of illusion, yoga, animals, aesthetics, destruction. When practitioners of the Hindu god of illusion, yoga, animals, aesthetics places a mark in the middle of their foreheads of the people, that is most definitely preparation for the final mark of the beast of Revelation 13, 16 through 18. It is a very big deal when the First Lady Laura Bush practices yoga every day. Millions of people look up to her example. I sure don't, though. But as the First Lady of the President, and many will try to emulate her. But why should we be surprised? For her husband is a lifelong adept in one of the most evil black magic secret societies in the world, the Skull and Bones, where they have to lay naked in a coffin and confess all their sins. To their, to their brothers, and they're all cataloged. And this is why people that are politicians in high-level areas typically don't open their mouth a whole lot because they've got so much information on them. If they were to ever open their mouth or were to ever want to go straight, they've got all this voluminous amount of information that can be used against them. It's just one of the reasons. So, do we have any evidence that America's love affair for Eastern meditation religions like yoga has really, really, really hit mainstream? Yes, we do. This next story reveals it. It's entitled, it's from CNN, this is from 2003, it's entitled, Yoga Craze Spills Over to Preschoolers. Now remember, Jesus said that it were better if a millstone were hung about your neck and you were cast in the midst of the sea, than you offend one of these little ones that believe in me. That's how strongly Jesus Christ feels about us defiling little children. This is from Associated Press. When the yoga teacher urges her students to stretch like trees, Benjamin Wolfgang gets up on his toes. Jenna Katz opens her palms to the ceiling. Jenna is four. And with two years of instruction, two years of instruction behind her already, a veteran in an increasing popular activity, yoga for children. For teachers like theirs, Jody Comator is a fast expanding business. Two years ago, she taught 50 children a week at her next generation yoga studio in Upper Manhattan. Now, there are 150 students paying $20 per 45-minute classes? Little kids? Clearly, the children enjoy themselves as they slither like snakes, bark like dogs, and try to dodge the mist Cordomer sprays on them, the lady. She's saying, this is rain. If you like rain, be a tree. Now, it's funny, you know, they're doing this stuff like slithering like snakes, barking like dogs. It sounds like the Azusa Street Revival that started the whole Pentecostal charismatic movement. It sounds like a lot of the modern day charismatic movement things where I have literally seen them. I've seen the footage of people, um, this blasphemous one where this one guy was like, he had a little collar. They put a collar on him. This was right up on stage. And the one guy was crawling around like a dog. And the one lady was like, where he leads, I will follow. It's just like the Bible. You know, like the, the, he was acting like a dog leading the... You know, just blasphemy going on. People slithering like snakes, barking like dogs, doing all these animal calls. This goes on in the charismatic things and, you know, going on here in yoga classes too, evidently, in some of them. America's leading her precious young children relig religiously astray. Additionally, tens of millions of Americans across the entire age spectrum are practicing some form of Eastern meditation religions. The practice is getting so widespread now that it can be revealed that the First Lady of the United States actually practices yoga daily. America is now free-falling into the prophesied abyss. The President and Mrs. Bush leading the way. I couldn't agree more. Now we're going we're gonna to end with a few uh, news stories from this Lighthouse Trails research that I mentioned before. Just some excerpts from some of these stories to, to kind of give you a little more understanding of this, how it's infiltrated the church. This one was entitled, BGC World Magazine article by contemplative Jan Johnson includes yoga poses. BCG Magazine is the publication of the Illinois-based Baptist General Conference. So when we say BGC, it stands for Baptist General Conference. BGC has a long history dating back to the 1800s when Swedish Baptists came to America to escape religious persecution. With a heritage like that, it is with dismay that we must report that the May 2008 BGC World Magazine is carrying an article about fitness written by contemplative proponent Jan Johnson. The article titled, Bent Every Which Way, shows photos of young women in various yoga positions. Jan Johnson is the author of Enjoying the Presence of God and When the Soul Listens. In the, in the later book she states, contemplative prayer in its simplest form is a prayer in which you still your thoughts and emotions and focus on God himself. 
This puts you in a better state to be aware of God's presence and makes you better able to hear God's voice correcting, guiding, directing. Page 16. Johnson's explanation on the initial stages of contemplative prayer leaves no doubt that still in your thoughts means only one thing. She explains, In the beginning, it is usual to feel nothing but a cloud of unknowing. If you're a person who has relied on yourself a great deal to know what's going on, this unknowing will end up being unnerving. Johnson points to several mystics in the book. Henry Nowen, who we've mentioned in previous studies, Thomas Merton, Madame Gunyan, one of my favorites, and then Brother Lawrence. John of the Cross, John of the Cross, whoever that is, uh, but, you know, the name, the name works for me, John of the Cross, you know. And then, and others, Brother Lawrence would resonate with Johnson's message of a nerving prayer. In his book, Practice in the Presence of God, it says he danced violently like a madman when he went into the presence. And now he was a, essentially, he was a Catholic that worked at a monastery, wasn't he? And I had a guy, oh, it was about a year and a half ago. Maybe two years. He told me we were we were in. He told me about this book that he read. Changed his life forever. And it was Brother Lawrence practice in the presence of God. And I didn't know what it was, so I didn't say anything to her. I had no idea. I thought maybe it was really a good Christian book. old book. You know, it was eighteen hundreds, which I would a lot of times have more faith that it was probably more solid than it was something modern day. No, 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 no. I checked it out. Stay away from that guy. He's nothing more than a Catholic mystic. He's going to lead you to hell, just like so many of these other people. That's why the Bible says, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and that maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. Jeremiah 17.5. Just don't do it. Okay? It's just not something you want to get in the habit of. But yeah, really avoid this Brother Lawrence guy. In Johnson's book, she references the book, The Cloud of Unknowing. Ray Youngen discusses this book. Now, he's exposing this, and he says... To my dismay, I discovered the mystical silence is accomplished by the same methods used by New Agers to achieve their silence. The mantra in the breath. Now remember, this mantra, this breath, is absolutely incorporated into the modern day practice of yoga. Contemplative prayer is the repetition of what is referred to as prayer word or sacred word until one reaches a state where the soul rather than the mind contemplates God. Contemplative prayer teacher and Zen master Willis Jaeger brought this out when he postulated, Do not reflect on the meaning of the word. Thinking and reflecting must cease. As all mystical writers insist, simply sound the word silently, letting go of all feelings and thoughts. Then what can happen is, is the demons take over and you go into a state where, you know, uh, sometimes it's a state of what they call automatic writing, where they actually will dictate books. Uh, either on the computer or through uh, pen or pencil, well, they'll actually the spirit will so possess them that they can actually write these things out. Many, many books. All of Alice Bailey's books were essentially written that way. Uh, one of the books of Aleister Crowley, the Book of the Law, was written that way after he spent a night in the King's Chamber in the Pyramid of Giza. Uh, so you know, or was it the Queen's Chamber? I forget. I don't know. Queen, king or Queen? Anyway, so. Yeah, that's a very, very common way to get stuff done in the occult. The premise here is that really in order to know God, mysticism must be practiced. The mind has to be shut down or turned off so that the cloud of unknowing where the presence of God awaits can be experienced. Practitioners of this method believe that if the sacred words are Christian, you will get Christ. It's simply a matter of intent even through the method is identical to the occult Eastern practices. Again, flee all appearance of evil. This is evil. Many Christians do not understand that yoga is the heartbeat of Hinduism and that it does not belong in biblical Christianity. Pastor Larry De Bruin explains, quote, Christianity cannot be integrated with yoga and remain Christian. To think otherwise imperils the Christian the Christian's truth and faith. As the managing editor of Hinduism today uh, I can't even possibly say this guy's name, but it, he remarks, Hinduism is the soul of yoga. Now, this is a guy that's the managing editor of Hinduism today. He says Hinduism is the soul of yoga. Based as it is on the Hindu scripture and developed by Hindu sages. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? The yoga opens up new and more refined states of mind, and to understand them, one needs to believe in and understand the Hindu way of looking at God. You have to understand the Hindu way of looking at God, which is this impersonal Brahman God. 
A Christian trying to adapt these practices will likely disrupt their own Christian beliefs. This is what this guy is saying. East is West and West is East. And if Christianity is to remain Christian, the twain should never be married. Okay, so he's coming right out and saying this, this is not something that you want to do. The next article was entitled, In the Spirit, Church Opens Door to Yoga. Washingtonville, the only light in sight, St. Anne's Episcopal Church this Monday night is that of a small lamp next to the CD player emitting a composition of flute and electronic keyboard music. Standing next to the lamp on the exercise mat is Linda Dorotry, instructing her students to bend forward, legs apart, and arms outstretched. Now remember, this is at St. Anne's Episcopal Church. Okay, She says, Think, O oh God, let me bow down in front of you and honor you. So you see the, the, the religious connotation here. Oh, we're bending forward. And, but we're, we're doing it in a yoga way, but we're killing two birds with one stone. Because not only are we getting our exercise in our yoga, but we're also bowing down and worshiping God. It's like strange incense that God talks about. The strange, you know, strange fire. He doesn't want it. He will not receive this type of worship. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me, according to Psalm 66, verse 18. Now, this is iniquity. So don't expect to get your prayers answered either if you're participating in these occult practices. Such, uh, these, what she just said about, oh God, let me bow down in honor of you, such pronouncements pepper the entire 45 to 50 minute session of bending, stretching, meditating that Dortree teaches at the Washingtonville Church each week. You see how they, they pepper everything with this pseudo-Christian candy-coated veneer? It's an abomination to God. It's part of a growing Christian yoga movement that has recently entered our region, joining Eastern techniques in health and spiritual fitness with the West's largest religion. The rise of that trend in 2005 brought criticism from Christian and Hindu purists who believe that the Indian spiritual roots of yoga are irreconcilable with the West's religion. Now, there were some Christians where, that brought criticism, and, but there was also Hindu priests that were criticizing this. Because they both believed that the Indian spiritual roots of yoga were irreconcilable, which they are, with Christianity. I mean, even the Hindu purists know this. Next article, Southern Baptist Church continues to promote Hindu paganism. Welcome to, well, if we read 1 Timothy uh, 4, 1, 2, 4, 1 and 2, now the spirits speak expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, and having their conscience seared with a hot iron. That's where we're at today. These people have given heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. They've heaped in themselves teachers, having itching ears, and of whom a man is overcome, the same he is brought into bondage. So this is what we're talking about here. This article, the Southern Baptist Church continues to promote paganism starts out by saying, Welcome to the website of Salem Avenue Baptist Church, located in Rolla, Missouri. We are glad that you have chosen to visit our site. This is their website. And hope that your time here is enjoyable and informative. After you have found the specific information for which you are looking, please take some time and browse through our ministries and photo pages. You will find that the Salem Avenue Baptist Church is a loving, caring, active church with a number of dynamic ministries all designed to honor Christ. Remember that. And bring others to know Him as Savior. What a, anyway, it goes on to say, while Salem Avenue Baptist Church may be a loving, caring, su supposedly loving and caring church, they, they don't love them enough to tell them the truth. That's not love. It's not, it's not love when you lead somebody off into perdition and hell. That's not love. That's hate. Woe unto them that call good evil and evil good. That's what most of the church is doing on so many different levels and issues. They're calling evil good and, evil and good evil. Well, they may fancy themselves a loving, caring church, browsing Salem's Avenue's website could be hazardous to your spiritual health. As the unwary believer, because of this writing, this website contains over 40 references to the Hindu pagan practices of yoga. That's what they, if you browse their website, you're going to get 40 references to yoga. This next site, if yoga is Hindu, why are Christians doing it in the church and to the Lord's Prayer? This is from the New York Press by Elizabeth Valio. To get, to get their weekly yoga classes, practitioners carry their mats past a New York sports club and a crunch gym. Then they walk into a church where the minister wears a t-shirt and spandex capri pants? 
Can you imagine? You can't help but but chuckle about this. Can you imagine walking into a church? Yeah, bring your exercise mats. Pastor's going to... And he's up there. He's in spandex, capri pants, and a t-shirt. And where they recite the Lord's Prayer while stretching into the sun salute. S-U-N salute. Like the sun god. Oh, that's nice. They're part of a growing U.S. movement. Christians who say they're getting closer to God in a non-traditional way. No, they're, getting, they're getting closer to Satan in a non-traditional way. Christian yoga classes have been the most popular way for adults to enrich their faith in the past seven years. According to Reverend Thomas Ryan, a Christian yoga instructor, and I've got a whole teaching on the subject of Reverend, just put in Reverend in my search box on my homepage. I've got, it's not a long teaching, like 20 minutes long. Is that title something that any... Okay, continuing on, my recorder just cut out there, so... Um, this may be a tad bit redundant. I'm not 100% sure exactly where it cut off, so I'm going to just try to estimate that. This next article is Southern Baptist University offers Yoga with Sarah on campus. And in Missouri Southwest Baptist University, or SBU, is offering yoga classes that are said to be very popular and well attended. Uh, J.D. Lynch, who directs the center, explained that yoga is one of the several fitness classes at SBU. The class, Yoga with Sarah, is advertised as being a time for stretching and strengthening the body in a relaxing type of atmosphere. There's no mention about yoga being a Hindu type exercise. The yoga and Pilates are offered as low impact workouts in comparison to the cardio jam and cardio step and others that stress the joints and ligaments. Lynch wrote in an email, yoga is currently co-modified nationally as a program element in the fit fitness industry and is integral part of the high percentage of commercial and institutional formats. And again, with the fitness industry, if they can give it credibility, then you lower your guard down in regard to the spiritual baggage you may be picking up. It's like, again, I, uh, the, the school system, the public school system is coming in with Scholastic Inc. and saying, hey, here are these Harry Potter books that it's okay for the kiddies to read as long as they're reading. Yeah, it's a primer on witchcraft, high-level witchcraft, no less. But it's okay because it's getting them to read. And there's really no spiritual baggage or, or anything with this anyway. So it's very similar. The yoga classes are very popular, well-attended. Yoga, the class Yoga with Sarah is offered by an instructor named Sarah. And the term yoga is a more politically correct term with, yo with students than a stretching class. Yoga is Vedic or Hindu, or Hindu in culture. Historians say it's 5,000 years old, and as such it is not Christian. The practice of yoga is designed to unite the individual with the infinite. According to the article by Dennis McGuire on yoga.com, uh, this guy who is a professor at Hindu University of America has also explained that the American process of calling yoga just exercise is an insult to yoga purists who seek to guard their form of worship. Now hold on, this guy's Subhas Tawari, professor at the, at the Hindu University of America. He has explained that the American process of calling yoga, quote, just exercise, which is what the Christian church just loves to say, about yoga. It's just exercise. He said that that is an insult to yoga purists who seek to guard their form of worship. Well, doesn't that sound like a religion? I mean, any religious connotation involves worship, right? Of some deity. That's exactly what they're saying. Again, the people that are the yogi gurus have more discernment than the Christians. Then, the next article, and we had if that did get cut off, John MacArthur had made a comment in a CNN interview where he said, when asked about yoga, well, that would depend on how the yoga is conducted. If it's just purely exercise and you're a strong Christian, it probably wouldn't have any impact on your faith. Well, we've already talked about if it would not have an impact on your faith. Okay? And again, what is John MacArthur doing? He's being a stumbling block before thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people that will now think that their spiritual mentor, John MacArthur, said, well, I'll give it the green light. What is John MacArthur being used as in that? He's being used of Satan. He's being used as an agent of Satan to get you to lower your guard. He's putting a stumbling block before the brethren of which he will have to give an account. Not to say that I am think I'm perfect, but I'm just telling you, if it was me doing it, 
you know, I would be just as accountable, so I'm not trying to hold him to a higher accountability than I would hold myself. This article is entitled, Is It Okay for a Strong Christian to Practice Yoga? It would be like, is it okay for a strong Christian to participate in witchcraft? Obviously, no, but this is the same deal. It's just a little more subtle. This is by Bud Press of the University Research Center. According to the Pulpit Magazine, on Tuesday, September 11th, 2007, John MacArthur was asked to, by CNN to participate in a live discussion on the topic of yoga and Christianity for a segment of the Prime News with Erica Hill. The other guest in the discussion was Doug Paget, a pastor in Minneapolis and a recognized leader in the emerging church movement. And when you see that emerging church movement, think of the contemplative emerging Rick Warren type um, New World Order, One World Religious System Church. See, this is the church of the Antichrist. This is the budding stages in the Christian line, at least. After a careful review of the transcript and video, Christian Research Service wrote a letter to John MacArthur and made numerous attempts to contact him afterwards. While CRS did not receive replies from Nathan Bosenitz, who is a member of MacArthur's staff, as of the writing, there has been no reply from MacArthur. They did receive a reply from Nathan Bennett's, but I don't, that doesn't go into what he said. In his correspondence with CRS, Bunitz, oh yeah, it says it right here, I'm sorry, stated that a quick reply could not be promised, although he would try to ask MacArthur before he leaves to travel out of state and overseas. According to Bucenitz, MacArthur would not return until October 13th. CRS explained that while MacArthur's busy schedule was, has to be taken into account, time was of the essence due to the fact that CRS has heard from fellow Christians of whom were just as concerned and confused over MacArthur's statements during the CNN primetime news interview. So, you know, again, most of the time, if somebody puts their foot in their mouth like that, many, many times you're just going to get ignored. It's just easier to, to make, to ignore it, and, and hopefully it'll go away. For anyone who thinks, um, oh, we've already talked about Carol Matriciano's book, uh, Yoga Uncoiled. And then also Dave Hunt has a book called Yoga and the Body of Christ, which is, also, which is a book format that you could buy in, that would expose this. The next article is entitled Catholic Priest Encourages Practice of Yoga. According to the news carried by Indo-Asian News Service website, Roman Catholic priest, Father John Fiera, the Bible says call no man father but your father in heaven, Totally an unbiblical term, father, particularly when you put it in a religious connotation to a man. Principal of the St. Peter's College in Agra, one of India's oldest educational institutions, says Christian priests in Britain are completely ignorant about yoga. They probably are. They know nothing about yoga. They should first study and experience the benefits of India's ancient science before commenting. Fiera 57 told, now this guy is a Roman Catholic priest... And evidently he's an expert on yoga. He's an Indian Catholic, Roman Catholic priest. He's from India. Okay, so he's really got the full package here. He was referring to an uproar in Britain after some British clergy called for a ban on yoga classes for children, terming it an unchristian activity. Well, I'm glad they did that at least. Not sex, but yoga education is in need in this hour, Fiera said. We don't need sex education, we need yoga education. Speaking after a half-hour yoga class in an assembly attended by over 1,500 students, teachers and other assistants, the yoga session is held every school day. There. Here's another one. Hindu Council attacks a legal church ban on yoga. Hindu Church Council, UK, the largest national network of Hindu organizations within the UK, is considering whether a ban on yoga classes at St. James Church and the Silver Street Baptist Church in Taunton, Somerset, may breach the Equality Act of 2006. What, is this kind of like now committing a hate crime? That you won't uh, uh, sponsor yoga classes in your church? Well, it's pretty much coming to that. Lawyers for the HCUK are exploring whether the comments made by both Reverend Tim Jones, the vicar of St. James... Now, we have two totally unbiblical terms there. Reverend, again, only the only... Uh, only God is worthy of reverence. Holy and reverend is He. Okay, that's how the Bible refers it. So, and then He calls Himself the Vicar of Saint James. Vicar, we hear um, the Pope referred to sometimes as the Vicar of Christ. Vicar means substitute. So He's the substitute of Saint James, evidently. <laughs> 
ab- abominable titles, okay? It's, you know, this is all pride, is really when you look at it. And then the Reverend Simon Fair of Silver Street Baptist Church, he calls himself Reverend and he's in a Baptist church. They said that yoga is a sham, and a false philosophy, and unchristian. It may indicate they have, co- have acted contrary to the religion and belief section of this Equality Act of 2006. Oh boy! Specifically those parts relating to discrimination and providing goods for facilities and services. See, they better be careful or they're going to get their 501c3 status revoked. Yes, they are. And that would be a terrible thing for the reverend and the vicars out there to get their 501c3 status revoked so that their, their parishioners couldn't write it off on their tax taxes. I mean, shouldn't that be our motivation for giving anyway? So you can write it off on your taxes to be seen among all men? So Jesus can say to you, verily you hath your reward? Shouldn't that be our motivation? Now again, please go reference my 501c3, just key in 501c3 on my homepage, and um, you'll get several teachings that I've done on that issue. I, I, I'm sorry, it just sometimes it's so hard for me not to be sarcastic about these issues, because there's so much leaven and heresy and apostasy, and you've got guys like this that are obviously spiritual blind, calling themselves vicar and reverend, and yet they, they're saying, oh, this is unchristian. And they don't even understand the very terms that define them are totally unchristian. Other than that, I'm pretty neutral on the subject, though. You know, sorry, just kidding. Books on the yoga occupy the bookshelves of Christian bookstores. Did you know that? Oh, yeah, your typical Christian bookstore is full of all kind of abominations and heresies. I try not to even set foot in those places. If I have to buy something uh, of a Christian orientation, I try, or like a Bible or something, try to buy it online. Chances are you're not going to be able to get the right King James Bible in one of the Christian bookstores anyway. Reference my last teaching on counterfeit King James Bibles. Churches offer these yoga books... Uh, churches offer yoga as classes. Some are calling it Christian yoga, but there's nothing Christian about yoga. In fact, rather than lead Christians to God, as it claims it actually leads Christians away from God, many Eastern religions teach that the source of salvation is found in us, our own godhood, and that the fundamental problem is ignorance. This is contrary to what the Bible tells us. The fundamental human problem is not ignorance, but rather our sin against a holy God who gave his only son as our only source of salvation. It is estimated that 20 million Americans practice yoga. It is certainly hip among the rich and famous. Madonna, Oprah Winfrey, Monica Lewinsky, Hillary Clinton, former Supreme Court Justice Sandra Day O'Connor, Alan Tipper Gore. We talked about President Bush's wife. So when you have those people doing it, you know. And the last article is entitled, Vickers Ban Unchristian Yoga for Toddlers. A children's exercise class has been banned from two church halls because of its teaching on yoga. The group has turned away. The group has been turned away by vicars, who who describe yoga as a sham and unchristian. This is the, I believe, the story relating to the story we just talked about. Louise Woodcock, who was looking for a new home for her yum yum yoga class, then you know you need every every church needs to have a yum yum yoga class in their in their thing for toddlers. Yoga class for toddlers. Yeah, get them corrupted as young as possible. That's what Satan's goal is, get them corrupted as young as possible. And even better if you can do it in the church. Satan comes out smelling like a rose on that one. He's just loving, he eats that up. But she was turned away by the Silver Street Baptist Church and the St. James Anglican Church of Taunton, Somerset, in the UK. Miss Woodcock says that the ban is ridiculous. This is the yoga teacher, the yum yum yoga class teacher. She says the band is ridiculous. The class has simply involved music and movement with no religious concept. Spoken like a true agent of Satan. You know. She said, quote, I couldn't believe it when they suddenly said, I couldn't have the hall anymore because yoga is against their Christian ethos. It's crazy because we're talking about kids pretending to be animals and doing exercises, routines to rhymes. That's all it is. It's innocent, good fun. Why can't we just all lighten up and get along? The Reverend Tim Jones, vicar of the St. James, said, any alternative philosophies or beliefs are offering are a sham. In the St. James Church, we want people to have the real thing. Oh, yeah, right. That's what's so ironic about this, when he says we want them to have the real thing. You couldn't even go in that church and get saved. But they want them to have the real thing, you know. He'll let in all these other ungodly things, but he's going to draw the line at yoga. 
Yoga has its roots in Hinduism and attempts to use exercises and relaxation techniques to put a person into a calm frame of mind in touch with some kind of impersonal spiritual reality. We don't want that. So, Anyway, that's my teachings for yoga. Hopefully in acupuncture. Hopefully they're going to be a blessing. And uh, I'll go ahead and close this out in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this time that you have given us. Praise you, Lord God in heaven, for your goodness and your mercy that you have bestowed upon us. I pray, Lord God, that you would forgive us for any and all sins that we have committed in any way, shape, or form, that you would wipe our slate clean, that the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart will be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer, and that, Lord, we would forgive those who have sinned against us. I pray, Lord God, for your mercy, for your mercy in the body of Christ, for your mercy upon the unsaved, Lord God, that you would save their souls, our unsaved family members, those that you've put in our lives, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that whatever it takes to get them saved, that would be done, that the fear of God would be upon the body of Christ and on the unsaved that are around us, and that that fear would drive them to repentance. Godly sorrow leadeth to repentance, as your word says, and I just pray that that would be upon them, and I pray to God that you would use the body of Christ, and wherever your word is being preached worldwide, I pray, God, you'd use it mightily for your glory. Lord God, that you would bless the remnant, Lord, those Christians in the world that are suffering, that don't have food, that don't have water, that are being persecuted, the orphans, the widows. Lord God, I do pray that your protective hand would be upon them, that your angels would encamp around about them, God, that you would bless them and use them mightily, Lord God. And we love you, Lord. We praise you and we ask all these things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray. Amen.